New health alert about the popular yellow dye found in so many of the things we use, including our clothing and paper. A new study is raising serious safety questions about whether it's potentially toxic. ABC's Gio Benitez has a story. It's that golden hue that dominates our world. Yellow, the color we turn to to make us smile. But this morning, a new Rutgers study has at least one scientist seeing red, sounding the alarm on a potentially troubling chemical used in just about everything yellow, from paint to clothing to toys. It's called PCB11. Anything that's printed with yellow pigment or yellow ink can have PCB11 in it. PCBs were banned 35 years ago. The EPA cites links to cancer and and damaging effects on the immune system, even the nervous system. But PCB11 is considered an unintentional byproduct of pigment manufacturing. It's not regulated as long as the concentrations aren't too high. In the study, all yellow clothing tested had PCB11. Most were children's clothes. Almost all paper with yellow ink had it too. PCB11 is one of the class of compounds called PCBs, and we know that they are toxic. They can cause a range of different health effects. The EPA now tells ABC News PCB11 is among the large number of PCBs that are being evaluated. In the meantime, what can you do to avoid that sunshiny color in other products? Well, the researcher says she herself washes any new yellow clothing for her kids a few times in hot water before they wear it for the first time. Yellow pigment is the worst of the offenders, but there's PCBs in some of the other pigments as well. When it comes to yellow, she says, don't let its colorful brightness fool you. For Good Morning America, Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Goodness, this has raised a lot of eyebrows. ABC's chief health and medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser, always good to have you weigh yeah. in on this. So yeah. there are different types of colors of, of dye. What's going on? Well, you know, this is this is a scary situation because we really don't know whether there's risk here. And other researchers have looked at other colors. And so mm -hmm. it's not just a situation with yellow. They're finding it in, in many different colors of dye. But what we do know is this has nothing to do with food dye. It doesn't have to do with food dye. These are not allowed in foods, but we know that these dyes are getting into our water supply, and so they get into the food supply through through that route, and they are able to detect them in people's bodies because of the things we eat that that uh, th that are in that water. Okay, so if it can get in the food supply, how dangerous can it be for humans if consumed? Well, you know, I think if there were a really big health risk, we would we would have detected something, but that doesn't mean that there's not a small health risk from long-term exposure. And I hope that this kind of information is going to lead scientists to do more studies. There's not enough studies about low, low dose chemicals in our environment and long term exposure. And what does that what does that mean to us? I'm not changing anything I do based on this. But the researcher is she's washing her kids clothes. And if you're concerned about this, you know, washing new clothes to get some of the dye out of there will will reduce some of their exposure to that dye. It doesn't keep it out of the water. Makes supply. sense. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, there's all kinds of fabric softener and things in there. That's not a bad thing to do. Okay. It's certainly important to be aware of. Yeah. Exactly. Nothing else.